Hi there. My name is Kevin Alcuni, and I am a librarian here in the Exploration and Creativity Department of the Los Angeles Public Library. And I'm here to welcome you to today's LA Made, a tamale making workshop with two Mamacitas pop up kitchen. Before we begin, we'd like to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, our Library Foundation, and our behind the scenes staff for helping bring the LA Made programs to you virtually. LA Made focuses on the diverse landscape of Los Angeles highlighting the immense artistic and performance talent that has developed in the course of the city's eclectic history. If you'd like to see more of our amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org slash events. And for our, our LA Made programs, visit lapl.org slash LA Made. Our website also has blog posts and video links that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. But now on to today's program, Tamale Making Workshop with Two Mamacitas Pop-Up Kitchen. During today's special LMA program, join Chef Perla Yasmin Melendez of Two Mamacitas Pop-Up Kitchen for this tamale making workshop. She'll guide us through this intricate process of making Veracruz style tamales wrapped in banana leaf. This recipe has been in her family for generation and is now one of the best seller is now one of the best sellers on the Two Mamacitas menu. Born and raised in the Silver Lake and Knuckle Park neighborhoods of Los Angeles, Perla Yasmin Melendez is the owner of Two Mamacitas Pop-Up Kitchen, an Oakland-based catering company specializing in Latin American and Caribbean cuisine using our local, organic, and seasonal ingredients. She is inspired by Mother Nature's color palette, intelligence, and resilience, and believes that using plants to heal is a revolutionary act. In addition to running Two Mamacitas, Perla is also creative director at Chapter 510, an Oakland-based youth writing, bookmaking, and publishing center. Perla spends most of her free time cooking, daydreaming about what to cook next, swooning at all the produce at farmer's markets, and caring for her plants. And now let's welcome our guest, Chef Perla. Yay! What's Yay! up? We made Yay! it! Virtual high five! <laughs> I'm so <gasps> just so, so everyone knows yeah for sure <laughs> just so the public knows me and, and Carol have been friends for almost 20 years now and um it's the first time we've ever got to do a program together we're normally so used exciting. to just making fun of each other and shelving books so um cool yes we worked for many a years at the skylight bookstore um and i think i think Carla has a has a video right that we're going to show first before we be uh, before we get going yeah, I wanted to put together just a time lapse video of the whole uh, process of making tamales. Okay. Uh, so, oh, there's your gardener. Great timing. There's, there he is. Great timing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is that's so great. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna still be here, but off camera, and then we're gonna show the video, and uh, Perla will still be here, and then uh, yeah, we'll just start from going. If you want to start the video, Steve. All right, very exciting, but quiet. This video makes it look like it takes like five minutes to make the money. How long so, did this take you? Much more. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing that people don't know about Perla is that um, while she is a great chef, she is literally the world's slowest eater. <laughs> a little known secret for people that don't know Perla. <laughs> I'm so, I like to enjoy. And I know, but like... I'm not sure if a regular meal is supposed to last four hours. Like, <laughs> I. All right, fine. It's not four hours. It is a while. It's two. Okay. It, it's still a long time for one meal, but um, maybe I'm old fashioned that way. <laughs> That's cool. Is this all at your house? This is all at my house, the two wow. Mamacitas headquarters. Is your kitchen pretty big? <laughs> my kitchen is actually so large. I lucked out when I found this place a year ago. And oh. I mean, the places that I were, was looking at before finding this place like the kitchen was kind of an afterthought of the whole space it was like oh wow. like a little corner of the living room or like it was kind of like a little nook or it wasn't a full room but this kitchen is bigger than my bedroom wow and i can That's fit great. my two fridges in it i have my uh... baker's rack i have two kitchen islands i have a portable dishwasher that i brought and i have a whole shelf 
a whole spice shelf. Yeah. And so, I still have so much room. Yeah. So what's going on right now with the uh, with the banana leaves? You're cutting them up? Yes. So we're going to do this also. Um, I'm cutting the banana leaves to size because they come in huge leaves. So um, when this video is done playing, I'll show you a, an example of a baby banana leaf plant. And then okay. I'll show you what the leaves that you can get in the store look like. And they're just huge so okay. you have to cut them down and then you have to clean them because they're you know they came from outside and they're dirty yeah yeah how long does that take like all the cleaning the banana leaves and all that um, does, it, does it take a minute it does it, it depends on how many you're making so i think i had prepared about three pounds of leaves for this video okay. and um it took about 40 minutes to uh. clean Maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes to cut. And then the, this step is curing the leaves, which uh -huh. softens them and lets them be able to be pliable enough to fold when you're making the money. How um, hot is the, the pan when you're, when you're curing them? Is it pretty hot? It's hot. Yeah. You uh, want it yeah. to be like an immediate sizzle. I got you. Um, once they get, get on the pan. Yeah. And now you're preparing the mole. Now I'm preparing the mole kind of dry roasting all of the ingredients so the tomatoes the onions the garlic sesame seeds the chinis okay and black pepper cool, and then, cool. um i did not film the blender blending oh you have, oh, you have to blend it all too and it's you have it, to, mm -hmm. and you have to blend it hot or you don't have to but i mean it's hot when you're blending it it's hot because um, actually kind of like a hidden step that didn't show up in that time lapse is once everything was roasted and taken off the pan, it was um, put in the hot in a blender with some chicken broth and that kind of continues to soften everything and then you okay. blend it. How long did it take you before you got pretty good at making them like this? Did it take a, um, some practice? It took a little bit of practice, but I would say all within the same tamale season. Okay. Um, I kind of, I kind of like got the hang of it because I had been making them every Christmas for since I was a kid. Oh, okay. And then when it came time to make my own recipe, that took a couple of years, like nailing the recipe of like how much oil to masa, and this is the most advanced tamale my tamale chops have been since. I've <laughs> since I started because I'm actually milling my own corn now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning of that time-lapse video is kind of, I put on the little credits running through, it's like extra credit slash step oh, zero right. because it's very involved. And if you would like to um, mill your own corn, then that's uh, like a separate workshop and uh, just DM me or something. <laughs> <laughs> to you about it because i was like we cannot do that in 15 minutes <laughs> is that like where you actually take like the corn stalk and then like having to like pluck out the corn and all of that or is that something that would be extra extra credit so i bought um dry field corn which oh, okay I'm pointing I, to the i think steve we can stop the video if we want to just go back to perla now yeah all so right sure this is um oh field i see corn, gotcha it's very hard. It's like similar to what a popcorn kernel is like. It's, you know, it's very dry and hard. Um, different from the tender corn that we all know is corn on the cob. Um, yeah. So this is soaked in a solution, like a, an alkaline solution with um, gal or lye. And uh -huh. it's cooked and cooked and cooked until it like puffs up, like just like the corn that you would have in pozole or hominy. Um, okay. And then it gets put through a grinder, which is a corn mill, and what comes out is masa. <laughs> wow, that's so yeah. cool. It's so cool. I love it so much. I just recently got my corn mill, and this this is the first season that I'm using it. <laughs> How long does it take to make masa? The, the actual making of it is so quick. This was like under four minutes. Oh, wow. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just the process before because your last night I put the corn on the stove oh, with the I lye see. and I boiled it and then I let it soak overnight 
and just around uh, noon is when I drained it and you have to kind of like massage it because the outside, the peel of, of each kernel or like its little baby husk that falls away with the with that process. And then the putting it through the mill is so fast. Okay, we already have some questions coming up if you don't mind me oh, asking yeah. as we're going, yeah? Sure, All yeah, right. let's do it. So Amy wants to know, Veracruz tamales versus other tamales, how is this style different? Can you describe this, the style? Yes. Thank you so much for that question, Amy. That's such a good question. Um, and I feel like a lot of people, when they think of tamales, their mind automatically goes to corn husk tamales, mm -hmm. um, which are very common in the northern parts of Mexico and even um, like in, in the Central Valley. Um, but as you get closer to the places, the regions where the climate is tropical, they're you know using what they have available so oh, yeah. the banana leaves are more prominent because it's it's hot and it's humid and there's an abundance of those leaves so they've um since forever been using them to wrap things and and cook things inside of them and and that is basically the the traditional tamale from veracruz is with the banana leaf and you don't really see that much with the corn husk over on that part of the country. Yeah, someone else just made a comment saying, uh, Samantha said, these tamales look like the Guatemalan Guatemalan yes. ones. Yeah, she had the same question. Yes, and as you go further, you know, you go down Central America, um, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Nicaragua has the Nacatamal, El Salvador, Costa Rica, like, across the board, it's pretty much the dominant tamale is this banana leaf tamale. And oh, okay. The, yeah, the range of what gets put inside is so wide. Um, I remember being in Costa Rica where I went to culinary school and their tamale has like rice and sometimes beans and meat and green beans. It's kind of like a whole meal inside the tamale. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, here's another comment talking about uh, Maria says in the Yucatan, we use banana leaves as well. Yeah. Vapors, it's are the best. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, maybe like cooking it from vapor, which is steam. Oh, OK. Is my guess. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, because they can be steamed or they can be some. I mean, it's not too traditional to bake them, but they could be baked or they could be uh, cooked over like an open flame. I mean, oh. they're still steamed because they're wrapped in the leaf. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, I see. Here, she put the correct. Vaporcitos. Oh, vaporcitos. I think that's a kind of tamal, maybe in the comments if she wants uh, to okay. expand. I'm yeah. not and then, super familiar with that. Kind and then Deborah says, are they called tamales in Central America? Yeah, they're still oh. called tamales. <laughs> <laughs> but in Puerto Rico, I know they have a tamal that is um, made with green plantain dough um, oh. instead of corn masa, like all across the board, I think in Central America and Mexico, it's like, even if the leaf changes or the husk inside it's corn, but in Puerto Rico, they have a tamal that's with banana leaf, but inside it's not corn, it's ground plantain. And I forget what those are called, but they're so good. Oh, yeah. I think they're called pasteles. Oh, yes, okay, cool. It. And then one last one, then we can, we'll move on. Diane just wants to know, should you your hands be warm when working with masa? It does help if your hands are warm, um, but it's not nothing, well, you'll do no harm oh, yeah. to the masa if your hands are cold and also like your hands will naturally warm up. Oh, gotcha. Oh yeah, I see. And then Deborah saying that they are called tamales, not tamales. Okay, so that's, okay. that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so if you want to go ahead and show us some of the next steps. Okay, yeah. So I thought we would start with um, the banana leaves, preparing them. So I just for reference, I want to show you my baby banana plant, banana leaf plant. Oh. So for scale, it's oh, yeah, like yeah. my hand is, it's pretty much the size of my hand. It's a young plant. Right. And then what we're wrapping these tamales in is uh are these leaves that are huge and this is one a piece of one single leaf and it's oh. only one side of it yeah, so the yeah. Other, you know this is this is the center piece and then there's another piece over here that is probably in this packet so 
Um, these are just huge leaves. It's great to be able to get them fresh. I'm lucky to have access to that here in Oakland. Um, oh, okay. I get them at the Mexican market and otherwise they do sell them frozen, usually at a Mexican market or at, um, at Korean markets or sometimes different Asian markets because they're used so widely, like across different countries, like a lot of different uh, regions and countries around the world use banana leaves for different purposes. Oh, cool. Yeah. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, start getting them to the size that we need them to be able to fold them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of tricky because it's, from, you know, it's truly an organic form and shape so no two leaves are going to be the same size or even have the same qualities oh, wow. um, and often they're they might have like little tears which are very easy to like <laughs> to like extend if you're not gentle with them like just oh just rip them more like, yeah yeah so um i would just try to work with that in whatever way you can um for example here, there's this piece is already splitting. Mm -hmm. So like, even if I want a smaller piece than this, I'm just going to leave this as is and work with it. And I'll probably end up folding it to kind of compensate for that space um, rather than like cutting it. And then all I'll have is a small piece. Um, so I'm going to cut this like fibrous part at the top because that's going to prevent me from being able to fold the thumb on easily. Okay. And then, yes, yeah, and then so I save these. I yeah. save these little pieces because usually I use them to tie. Oh, if that's I, a good idea. If I need like extra security. So, yeah. yeah, save these. And then Samantha wants to know do they have to be cut perfectly? They don't. There's actually, it's impossible. Even if you tried to cut it perfectly, <laughs> you would not succeed. Right. It's like, this is like Dave, definitely an invitation to just like let go of any kind of perfectionism because okay. the, yeah, Mother Nature will just be like, ha ha, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> so I cut this one and it is splitting. So what I'll end up doing, it might split some more when I'm curing it. Mm -hmm. um, but even if it, if it does, then I'll have two small pieces and I'll overlap them slightly to make one larger leaf gotcha. or I'll fold it, but we'll see that part um, when we get there. Okay. So um, that is the first step. And I have some leaves that I've pre-cut already. Um, so I won't, you know, spend this whole time cutting leaves, but um, <laughs> 40 minutes of cutting leaves. <laughs> just 40 minutes of me cutting leaves. Enjoy. That would yeah. be fun. Exactly. <laughs> um, but for your everyone's information, this is a great sized leaf. Um, it is about 11 inches by seven. And mm. I love this size. Um, it can get bigger, but it, it, it shouldn't really get too much smaller than this. Is that like a size of like a legal sheet of paper, 11 by seven, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it, it feels like a little bit wider. So this is, I have a piece of paper. Oh here, yeah. So yeah. Okay. You know, right. It's a little bit wider. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. So that is that process. I'm going to fold up these leaves and reserve them for my weekend of tamale making. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, the next step after cutting would be cleaning. So um, I usually get a damp cloth. And I just kind of run the cloth along the leaf on both sides. Mm -hmm. And I do this over and over and over until I'm done with the whole stack of leaves that I cut. Okay. Are you looking for any sort of level of cleanliness or you just kind of want to get it to not, um, are there like, is it, is there dirt on it or is it just kind of. Yeah. Cause... That's a good question. So I've rinsed them 
okay. before I even started cutting them. Uh -huh. um, but there is a little bit of like a, a chalky residue. Oh, I see. I'm not sure if it's coming through. So I just cleaned this one. Yeah, yeah. And then this one is like, oh, it I might see. not be too obvious, but it's a little bit chalky. So I usually try to get that layer off. Gotcha. And I that's when I know, or to me, I'm like, okay, it's clean. Right. Um, but yeah, you don't have to go overboard. Rinsing and wiping <laughs> on both sides is Don't plenty. get OCD on it. You're right. <laughs> don't get OCD with it. I mean, it's okay if you do, but it's going to take you a little <laughs> bit longer. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit longer. It's already a long process. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so the next process, or the next part of the process is um I'm get my little camping stove and um so i love using a cast iron griddle to cure the leaves oh, okay step one make sure the this thing is in right <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but i mean hopefully everyone would be doing this on their stove and not like oh, in the right. middle of the kitchen. I got you. Um, there was another question that popped up while you're doing that. Um, yeah. It's asking about frozen leaves. Uh, if we use frozen yeah. leaves, do we need to let them dry out? If you use frozen leaves, the a good process is to let them thaw because okay. that will help you uh, take them apart more delicately um, mm. and without them like tearing. Oh. Um, and then... And then I would put them, submerge them in a tray uh, with water, warm water, and kind of just like help them unfold because they wrap them like in a folded stack pretty, oh, I got you. pretty tightly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then once you do that, then you you're just start with the cutting and then the cleaning and then the curing. Oh, I see. So thawing it out, kind of submerging it in water, and then once it's a little more pliable, yeah. um, starting to work with it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, it's easier to see this in the time lapse video because it got pretty close, which I think hopefully everyone can have access to that video. Um, yeah, maybe we can uh, put it in with the, uh, well, we'll figure something out after. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Teamwork. So we have everyone's like email addresses who came. Or something. Or... Okay. Know. We'll figure All it right. out. We'll use our okay. library skills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You had a special library card just to watch that video. No, no, yeah. no special. We'll just use our problem solving. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then here's your Instagram. Yes, <laughs> and I'll put it on follow. my Instagram, too. Oh, I okay. Yeah, that. people want to follow per Perla. Perla. Yes. So <laughs> you, you're rocking it. So I dammed in this little cloth, uh -huh. and um, I'm what I'm looking for is for the leaf to turn a brighter green. Okay. And for it to, you can just tell that it's starting to take in the heat and like steam up and get softer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of like when you have a corn tortilla and it's, it's like you can't really do much with it unless it's warm. Um, you can't fold it or like roll it too easily. Is it a pliability thing that you're kind of looking for when you're curing it? Okay. Yes, totally. It'd be... And here's the color it gets oh, okay. a lot. You know, yeah. it's like, basically, it's a cooked leaf now. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So this is really important, an important step. You really can't. I mean, the only step you could forgo is the cleaning, but you probably wouldn't want to. <laughs> because... would, that, would that affect the taste? I mean, let's it, just say. It would. Yeah. It would because you're, you have, you know, the leaves have some kind of residue. Gotcha. on them just from being outside and you know it's good it's a good idea good yeah. practice to clean the leaves um and while i'm talking about like good practices and just you guys are just beginning to see or you probably already know like all the work that it takes to make these and we haven't even started like making them right i would just like think twice about the tamales that are really affordable <laughs> 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 because you're like wait a minute how why it's right. so much work but i'm just putting that out there and uh 
gratitude and appreciation to the people that recognize that this is like a true art form. And like oh, for sure. Yeah. Look at all the work that's involved. Yeah. I mean, so, it just, yeah. This is so pliable. It feels so great. And it's like really warm. Oh, yeah. Um, Does so, it have a smell to it? Yes. It starts smelling just like um, it has a very specific smell, the banana leaf. Uh, mm. I can't, it's hard to describe, but it smells really great to me. Oh, yeah. Um, um, there's another question that popped up. Marcia wants to know, can you just run the leaf over an open flame? You can. And I have done that before, although I switched to doing it on the command just because I had more consistent oh, consistency. Gotcha. And there were certain moments when I was doing it over the open open flame where I felt like it was getting a little bit too exposed to the Scorched, yeah. Heat. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to scorch it. Um, so... And it's easier to like, this kind of feels like I'm ironing, you know, like when you have an <laughs> iron with the water, you've like sprayed the clothes with water and it's like, this right. kind of gives it like an even, a more even cure. Okay. Um, okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is prepare the salsa now that we have our comal on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use three different kinds of chiles. We're going to use um, guajillo which is this long, um, skinny one. We're going to mm -hmm. use uh, chile ancho or uh, pasilla, which is a very wrinkly, uh, shorty, short and stout one. Uh -huh. And then we're going to use a very spicy one, which is the chile morita, which is actually the dried um, habanero pepper. Um, so we're going to... Let's see. I have my scissors somewhere. Steve, can you put up the uh, ingredients list just briefly so everyone can kind of see? We've yeah, just real quick. Just wanted to show people some of the uh, some of the ingredients that are being used. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Okay. Right. And then okay. uh, we'll try and figure out how to put this up onto the uh, attach it to the video later. Yes. All right. That's all perfect. Right. So, all right. Thank you. What I've done is um, I'm, I'm taking my scissors and I'm cutting the top, the very top of every chile, uh -huh. uh, just taking off the stem. Uh -huh. And then I'm wanting, I want to reserve the seeds. You can kind of like open the chile up like a little bag and like empty it. Okay. Because they're just kind of like rattling around in there. And then I get the scissors and I kind of just like, as if I was creating a zipper for it, I'm just like going mm. down the whole way. And then there's always a couple more to a couple more seeds to shake out. And we're saving the seeds because we want to use them in this mole. Oh, okay. Cool. Are these ingredients uh, that can be kind of found in any, or, or I guess, uh, where where would people normally be able to um, get these ingredients? They're pretty available, um, if, especially if you live in a if you live in a city with a large Latino population. You you won't have any problem finding gotcha. these, um, even at the, the you know kind of like an on a regular supermarket and not like a specifically Latino market. Oh, if okay. you're at a Latino market, yeah, like hands down, 100%, you'll find that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no doubt. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. Or, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can come and talk to me if they don't have it. Because... All right. Just remember, everyone heard that. You can talk to Perla. Pa Perla. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> 20 years. So if you, if what happened for everyone not in on this inside joke is that um, Kevin and I met at a time in my life when I was not like really – letting people know how to pronounce my name and in school it was always this thing where like a lot of the teachers were like just call me Perla and I was like a shy pretty shy kid some of the time so I'd be like okay <laughs> that's fine <laughs> and then it just like that stuff you know throughout middle school and high school right. and then um I would even introduce myself as Perla even though I didn't ever feel like I was Perla, right. but um, then I went to college and I ended up studying abroad in Costa Rica. 
um, bef like during college and before culinary school. And I was, it was the first time that I was actually like, besides being around my family, who mm. always called me Bella, but like the first time I was in a place where every single person pronounced my name beautifully and correctly. And like, there was no mention of Perla anywhere. Um, and I came back and I was like, so empowered. I was like, I'm going to take back my name. <laughs> take it back. <laughs> but like, I also didn't, there were, I didn't stick around LA that much, like that much right. longer after that. So then I moved to the Bay and um, I just introduced myself as Perla and everyone got it because they didn't know any right. other, they didn't know me by any other name. But anyway, yesterday I would, said, Kevin, I'm trying to get everyone to pronounce my name Perla. Uh, last <laughs> night at 10 p.m. <laughs> so yeah, as you can imagine, 20 years of one yeah. way, uh, I had to write a, I, I'm, but I'm trying. I'm trying so but hard. You're doing so good. Everyone, <laughs> give Kevin some props because he's doing an amazing. I'm trying so job. hard after 20 years of friendship. All right, doing an more, amazing job. A couple more questions have come in since uh, we've been joking. Um, <laughs> so, for the recipe provided to us, how many tamales can be made? Um, so you should get about 36, 30 to 35 tamales. Oh. That's yeah. That's good. Yeah, and I was going to make it for less, but I was like, you know what? It doesn't even make sense to make less because honestly, oh, you're investing work. so much time. Yeah, yeah. It, it would all it take a similar amount of time to make uh to prepare oh, like all two. this for thirty seconds. <laughs> right. Yeah. I would make two. Like, yeah. Two hours later, you're like, great. Oh, these are delicious. <laughs> It's over. <laughs> these are these two are great, right? Yeah. And then one more. Marcia wants to know: um, Is the coconut traditional, or did you get rid of the lard because it is lard? Oh, uh, okay. Yes, you got it. I got rid of the lard because it's lard, and um, I there's a certain kind of like heaviness that comes with tamales that I'm sure everyone knows. It kind of like you can't enjoy many like that many in a row or if you do you enjoy them and then afterwards you kind of feel like really heavy and like oh, Ooh, yeah, i yeah. just really ate a lot of lard um but also for two mamacitas for my business i there are a lot of vegan and vegetarian orders and i kind of wanted to streamline the process of only making one dough oh <laughs> um, that makes sense yeah yeah because it was not excited about making two different kinds or or three. So um, I was playing around with with the quantities and different kinds of oil. I, my grandmother used to make it with uh, olive oil, even though that's not very traditional either. Oh. Um, and she was born in Veracruz. Um, but anyway, I landed on coconut oil and it's the, um, what is it called? It's, I have it on the, recipe it's refined coconut oil so it doesn't that's key because it actually doesn't have the coconut flavor oh none of the um, sweetness of that kind of the pulp i guess yeah it doesn't like a lot of coconut oil is delicious for certain things because it actually tastes like coconut yeah um yeah. and this one is just it tastes like a like neutral you know so yeah and i i really like it and i feel like they're a lot lighter and um healthier yeah uh another question's coming about the masa uh, deborah yeah. wants to know where can we get fresh masa without the montessa i don't know if i'm saying that right or slash lard uh, um she was saying oh, that, yeah okay uh, um, saying that we, most places already put the lard in it um, right so there's usually two options i mean hopefully there's two options wherever you get your masa there's uh, prepared masa preparada, which it has, it's basically ready to go. Like you bring gotcha. home the bag and you're start making your tamales, you know, mm -hmm. um, or they have, um, no preparada, like not prepared. And that's just, they milled the corn. It's basically what this is. So, um, I would just see it, ask if they have any masa no preparada, um, mm. or you can make your own, even though it's a little bit more time consuming, there are, it's still possible and, and definitely more affordable, just takes a little bit more effort and time. No, okay. um, but you don't have to have like a serious 
cornmeal like I have. You can have like a <laughs> tabletop cornmeal. You can, the KitchenAid makes like a grinding attachment. You uh, could do it on your metate, which is the traditional, like the traditional way that masa is made and with the stone. Yeah. Um, so there's several ways to do it. Um, not all of them are easy, but also not impossible. Gotcha. Uh, Samantha wants to know, um, how did you come up with the name Two Mamacitas? Two Mamacitas uh, started with a friend of my, a friend and I um, popping up at a restaurant in Oakland called Two Mamas Vegan Kitchen. And I was in grad school at the time and I was like making a, uh, I was picking up some food that we had ordered for like a grad program um, at their restaurant. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, they were like, oh, we, like, we're open on Fridays if you know of anyone who wants to do a, a pop up in our restaurant. Like, oh. you could just like use the restaurant space, put up your own menu, and we'll only charge you like $30. <laughs> and I was like, this is amazing. So I talked to my friend who was someone that I usually like, we got together and cooked a lot often. And I was like, do you want to like turn Two Mama's Vegan Kitchen into Two Mamacita's pop up kitchen <laughs> like every like once a month? and just do like Latin American food. Mm -hmm. um, and she was all about it. And so we did that two months in a row and it was really great. Um, and then we kind of, it came to a stop just because um, for several reasons, but like it, everything needed to be vegan that we made because oh, it, yeah. it was like a vegan restaurant and they didn't, you know, they wanted to keep the kitchen vegan. So it didn't end up like working too well with our menu. Um, but I kept the name um, and I continued to like pop up and sell food under that name since I had all the, the like branding ready mm -hmm. <laughs> and it took off. So I kept it. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm usually people ask, it's like a definite question. People ask at every single moment. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great. And I, <laughs> And I always have a different answer. So sometimes I'm like, oh, it's because I do enough work for two mamas, he says, oh. and just one. Or sometimes I'm like, it's, I'll tell you the whole story. And, I and guess sometimes, I'm, yeah. <laughs> it depends I on how much like, energy you have. Yeah, I'm like, let me go into this. But also, um, I feel like a sweet realization that I had is like my, so my mom uh, passed away around three and a half years ago. And I, feel like it's actually makes so much sense for her to be the other mamacita yeah because she's like you know all a lot of my kitchen wisdom and and yeah. interest is from her so now yeah. that's kind of like my go-to answer yeah that's good that's, that's really yeah. sweet yeah. okay so are you taking I, I don't know what to call that uh the, the shell the husk the so um, this is the chi the chile. So I'm okay. putting all the I've taken out all the seeds. They're right. all in here. Uh -huh. I'm putting all the chiles on this hot griddle, and it's hot enough to kind of like um, soften them, gotcha. but it's definitely not hot enough to burn them. And that's something that we want to avoid because they'll take on a, a bitter taste. Oh, so. Be careful not to burn the chiles, and um, this is where you can use a spatula to kind of like press, uh, flatten, yeah, flatten them because they do want to curl up. Like the more they're exposed to the heat, they'll want to curl up. Um, I have a couple utensils that I put here that are helpful for this. So spatula, we'll need a spoon later. Mm -hmm. Tongs, a uh, rubber spatula when we mix the masa. Um, those are good to have on hand. How long did it take you before you kind of got comfortable or um, like with the warming part of the chiles or? Um, so the having my hands on hot things, like I, I haven't, I've always been comfortable with that, but uh, the, the thing that is like totally a little bit uncomfortable and just like a part of this process, it just kind of makes me laugh is that, um, <laughs> This creates, it's, these are hot chiles, like they have a lot of spice and it creates a, a, something in the air that's like, Oh, the, yeah, the aroma of like, it. Yeah. 
sneeze and cough and cry and you're just like by the end of this you're just like in your kitchen like sobbing and and you're probably exhausted because you like procured all these things and it's (laughs) but like hopefully you're not doing this by yourself like I actually am often doing this by myself um but it's good this is why people have tamale parties or tamale parties you know they it's a family endeavor come and be part of the party like help cut the leaves clean the leaves cure them make the sauce make the dough you know so if i start sneezing or like coughing just know that's what's going on um and sometimes i just have to leave the room for a little while because (laughs) It's intense. And then, like, don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. For sure. Like, think about what you're going to do with your hands after this because it, you need to be mindful. Have you done that before and have been super sad after? I've just been like, oh, why is my face burning? Or, why, like, why did I mace myself? Why well, did I mace myself? <laughs> why cooking. did I mace myself? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. The coughing. Okay. Done. It feels just like a dryness in your throat. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be okay, and it's actually, I don't know, it's part of the process. I believe it. Okay, so these are great. They're curly. They're a little bit softer. They, uh-huh. If you fold it easily, um, if you can fold it easily, then that is a good sign. Okay, so I'm taking these hot chiles, mm-hmm. and I'm putting them in my blending jar, and I'm going to pour this chicken broth over okay. them. Does it matter if it's broth or stock? It doesn't. Um, it can be either. Okay. Um, it can be like bone broth or it can be chicken stock. And um, or if you're in a pinch, obviously you can use water. And it's still going to be great. I just made my first chicken stock uh, on my ooh. own. I know. I was like, ooh, look at me fancy. You are fancy. <laughs> How did it go? It came out good. I used it. I made a... I made like some uh, Chinese chicken dish the other day and I used it and I was like, I'm using all the things I made. That's I'm, awesome. I'm a fancy dad. <laughs> it's so good to have on stock. I'm, I'm really yeah. So like I'm just starting to food. utilize that in my slow cooker. So nice. Yeah. So what's happening now? So now I'm putting in um, the seeds of the chiles, uh-huh. but I, you only need a quarter cup. So I just eyeballed that amount. Gotcha. <laughs> um, the pepper black peppercorns it's good to that they're that, to have them whole because when you crack the peppercorns it the flavor is like really strong and fresh as opposed to <clears throat> peppercorns are already ground it's they've kind of like lost a lot of their potency oh so i always put in whole peppercorns oh here's a here's a fun comment a, uh a trick a trick that is, if you get chile in your eye to rub your hair or someone's long hair by your eye, the oil in your hair cures the pain of the chile. That's a great trick. Oh, all right. I love that. Thank so, you. Librarian's teaching you something. That's great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> huh, I wouldn't have thought of that, but that totally makes sense. That's right. awesome. Well, you can put that on your Instagram, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start. Start putting tricks. <laughs> I'm going to add the um, garlic cloves. Okay. And for these, I just kind of, I leave them in there in, the, you know, the peel. Um, oh, okay. And then I kind of like squeeze them out uh, once they're getting, once they're toasted. Mm. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with the onion. I'm going to cut it and um, leave it in its, in its peel. Uh, Diane wants us to give credit to Mama Vita for that trick of using the hair to rub out the chili oil. So, shout oh. so shout out to yeah. her. Thank you. I, I will. I will Mama remember Vita. that trick as well. That's a, yes. That, that sounds very to. easy. I need it often. Yeah. Thank you, Mama Vita. Okay. Great. So, um, just having the tomatoes, having the onion. And of keeping it in its own little quadrant of the comag because this, these things are going to get a little bit juicy. Okay. And I want to keep, I mean, it's not a big deal, but just for 
ease, I'm going to keep the seeds and everything kind of dry. Um, and then they're toasted every, it's, uh, the sesame seeds is, have taken on like a, a darker color. So I know that they're ready and I can smell okay. their toastiness. So are you just kind of going by scent as the kind of the, the, the preparedness or the finished quality of it? Well, scent and color. So the sesame seeds were kind of like a light, like a tan color when I put them on mm -hmm. this common. And uh -huh. now they're um, they're kind of like leaning more towards like a golden I see. color. And then I could smell the sesame oils. Oh, starting um, to release the, the their scent. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Probably this is so much fun. <laughs> it's so to, fun. I'm glad we're able to cook together. I mean, you're I doing all the work. I'm job. just <laughs> commenting like a sports reporter. Not a reporter. You have to like get on a plane right now and <laughs> okay. come and Come have tamales. Okay. <laughs> that, that that's super easy. I'll just let <laughs> let my wife and kids know. Yeah, tell, the whole family can come. Tell everyone. Okay. <laughs> easy okay, easy. So, all right so easy okay so that is that uh -huh. um and then we're also going to add a little bit of salt to the um to the mole and that is salt to taste um i'm using just fine sea salt and okay. i usually just put in a tablespoon and okay. then i i give it a try and you want to have it like taste like five percent more salt than you feel comfortable with because oh, it's going to be absorbed by the chicken the oh. chicken is really special in this tamal because it cooks inside it's not cooked you're we're putting in raw chicken and then it's cooking while it's steaming oh um which is fantastic because it makes it come out so tender and you'll never have like a dry piece of chicken yeah. inside these things. Cool. We have a comment here. Um, scent and color are every every abuelita's method. So Yes, <laughs> absolutely. They sure are. Yeah. And then uh, Samantha wanted to know, who taught you how to make tamales? My mom and my grandma oh. um, taught me. Like little by little, every year I would have a new job. Sometimes oh. <laughs> it would be folding, sometimes it would be cleaning the leaves, sometimes it would be chopping things. Um, and then I never really got like a clear recipe, uh -huh. like a measure for measure recipe. Right. Um, but I kind of just went with my gut and my my memory of what it tasted like and what it felt like and was able to kind of like oh kind yeah. of reproduce it reproduce it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not easy i feel like it's much easier to just cook it and and then it is i mean to just kind of like improv with it oh i see yeah yeah cook vibrationally yeah as as i like to say <laughs> i've never heard you say that <laughs> I don't need I twenty dollars. No. All right, fine. Yeah, I guess <laughs> you just picked up a book, new phase. This book I really like called Vibrational Cooking, oh. and it's all it's um it's like such a good, it's just a great classic cookbook. Um, oh, it's you know by Verda May. Oh, borrow it from um, the library, everybody. Yeah, get it from the library. Check it out. It's but one of the things she says it's like it's all in you. Like you have all the knowledge about how what like when something is ready and like how much salt it needs it's just like you just need to feel it and like not oh yeah it. yeah a little bit of a feel kind of thing yeah. yeah so i identify with that a lot right that doesn't always work for me but i do appreciate yeah. it <laughs> i know that it's not everyone's style yeah especially when i'm cooking uh, for the family and there's right like, uh <laughs> <laughs> Sad family meal. Sad family. No when, dinner tonight. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, there yeah. will always be dinner. I mean, okay, yes. so <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is while these are roasting, I'm mm -hmm. gonna start mixing making the masa with this corn because this is masa, but it's um not prepared. It's masa no preparada because it doesn't have the coconut oil or the baking soda or the salt. 
Okay. So I'm gonna weigh out. Um, I have my cheat sheet here. I'm going <laughs> to weigh out. Um, I'm gonna do half. I have this is a three pound chunk of masa, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. do eleven ounces of coconut oil using my big big spoon. There's another question here. Um, I hope I pronounce this right. Can we use pasilla chili instead of one of the chilies? Yeah. Okay. Is is the morita hotter? It's hot. Yeah, okay. morita is like so so hot. Okay. Okay. So I have my coconut oil. Okay. And then I just want to let the audience know we will probably be going a little bit over the hour, but uh, we're going to be here to see the final product. And it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. We're all going to be virtually pretending to eat this meal that Pearl is going to literally be eating. But it's, yeah. well, we'll all be vibrating, eating it together. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to put, I did my. Um, 11 ounces of coconut oil. I'm going to do um, a tablespoon and a little bit more of my sea salt. Okay. And then I'm going to put in some baking powder, three fourths tablespoon. You guys have different measurements because I gave you measurements for um, six pounds of masa. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay, and then this is a really fun part is um, feeding this masa. Um, well, first whipping these things because they turn into like a very nice, I don't know, like creamy mixture. Oh, okay. Um, let me get that on high. And you're still roasting the vegetables the whole time. This is kind of still going to soften yes. them. Yeah, okay. softening them. My whole setup is shaking from the power of this. <laughs> <laughs> this machine is just like rocking the world. Going back to the vibration. Going back to the vibration, yep. Okay, so I'm going to let this whip um, about, for about a minute. Okay. Um, and we want it to be, want it to feel, it should look like when you're whipping, like whipped cream, like it should be light oh, and frothy. Uh -huh. Anyone have any more questions? I think we're good for now. We're just hanging out watching your banana leaf shake. <laughs> yes, we don't look like. How long do you normally cook the uh, the um, the tomatoes and the onions? Is there a certain consistency you're looking for? Um, so you can see that oh, they're yeah. starting to get soft, right, and juicy. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, the skin is becoming a little bit wrinkly. Oh, right. So I'm looking for those two things, okay. and with the onion. I just I can tell that it's getting more soft and like less crispy feeling. Gotcha. And you could you can cut these down to these smaller pieces. It'll cook faster. I just kinda like how they look oh, bigger right. and then they're easier to put in the blender too. And then someone's asking, um, what could they use if they don't have a um like a mixer like that? If you don't have a mixer, um I mean, you could do this by hand, which uh -huh. is how a lot of people do it. And that's fine. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Gotcha. Um, because it takes a lot of like kneading. Oh, just using your hands and actually just uh, yeah, yeah. getting it all together. Yeah. And I would probably melt the coconut oil or get it, um, you know, it could still be solid, but have it be soft and, and workable mm -hmm. rather than. You know, right now and here, it's like 
I'm digging into this and this is powerful enough to kind of like yeah. break it apart. Gotcha. But if you're using your hands, yeah, get it to a soft point, add your salt, add your baking powder and start kind of whisking it maybe and then uh, work in your masa mm -hmm. and knead that a lot. So this machine, I feel like around five and a half pounds is the maximum that yeah, it that's... likes to have. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a bigger KitchenAid that is, I didn't find it as powerful as this smaller model, but uh -huh. it, that goes to around seven pounds. Okay. And that's how you kind of feed it in in small little chunks to get it incorporated? Yep. Gotcha. Look at me using words. <laughs> You're a chef now. <laughs> <laughs> Making my chicken stock, watching yeah. you, watching you do stuff. Need a hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, someone wants to know what model is the mixer. It is a KitchenAid Artisan okay. mixer. Um, 325 watts. Okay. Okay, so the masa is looking good. Um, these are ready to be blended, so I'm going to take my juicy soft tomatoes. Everything goes in the peel and um, for the tomatoes. And then for the garlic and the onion, I'm just going to, I already took off the outer layer of this onion. Mm. I'm going to take it off of this next one. You take out just the outer skin? Yeah, the like papery gotcha. layer. And then someone's asking, um, it doesn't, if it needs to be mixed, not whipped, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the case. Um, it the oil I like to whip it, okay. but the masa needs to be more mixed. Gotcha. Yeah. Or you, or like you can fold it in if you're doing it by hand. That's good too. Okay. And the garlic is like really crispy on the outside, and it's just oh, uh, just soft. pull off the yeah. Yeah. And that's all going to get blended together? It's all going to get blended. The chicken broth is in there. Um, the chicken broth has been softening the peppers. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK. So I'm going to blend that with the vitamin. at my station a little bit. Okay, right. so my sauce is Yeah, look at the consistency. Oh yeah. How are the how are the smells? What smells are the smells? So, so the... smoky. Smoky Ooh. and spicy and earthy. Ooh. Um take a little taste and see. Uh-huh. Mm. It's such a good sauce. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Every Steve, time. Steve, can you throw up the uh, the ingredients one more time? Just for people to see. Yeah. And then I think we're going to try and attach the ingredients to the um to the library's uh YouTube. Um we'll oh, keep great. Yeah, we'll try and keep it somewhere around there. So if people are watching, they can, uh, we'll have a link. We'll try and create something yeah. like that. All you right. can always email me at heymama at twomamacitos.com if you have any questions. Okay. Or hit me up on Instagram. Yeah. I think people are already kind of, we're, we're looking for the, in, 
the the recipe earlier, but she hasn't put it on yet. Okay, so yeah. this is my masa now. It's so it's like really soft. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, feels more like masa as opposed to what it was like before we started mixing everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I've prepare I pre cut um chicken chicken thighs. Um, oh, uh -huh. And I personally like to use bone in chicken thighs. I cut, I take off the skin and mm -hmm. I keep the bone in and maybe I'll cut it into two pieces. So one piece won't have the bone and one piece will, but there's something so special and maybe it's just nostalgia from growing up and how my grandma would do it. But it's like almost like lucky. You felt lucky like when you got a tamale and you had the bone, you like discovered the bone inside. Um, oh. And then it's also just great to see how the meat falls off the bone. It's like that okay. much more satisfying. But for this case, just to keep it simple for this oh. uh, show, mm -hmm. I did uh, boneless. Okay. Boneless chicken thighs. I always like to get um, organic chicken thighs or organic everything when possible um, because it's just good quality. Yeah. Good taste. Um, so I'm, you know, mixing the chicken in the sauce, making sure it's getting super saucy in here. Uh -huh. Um, you, this part can also be done, um, like the day of earlier, if you want to have your chicken kind of like ready to go and kind of being marinated almost. Um, oh, I see that, that works too. Yeah, yeah. It's not, I mean, it'll still be, any way, any way you do it, it's gonna be great. Right. But uh, it, it's good to kind of break up the process sometimes because it is so many steps and it went by somewhat fast for us because I just cut like one leaf and cleaned <laughs> one leaf. <laughs> But, seven hours, one tamale. <laughs> seven hours, one tamale. Okay, it's so, so good. I'm going to get my leaves that I have prepared already. Uh -huh. um, they are okay. Oh no, my earphone. How much are we over by? Uh, we're about three minutes over. Do you think about okay, another? Good. Yeah, because we're okay, gonna. We should be good. Okay. I think. Okay, so these are leaves that I cleaned and cured, and what I'm gonna do is I have my steamer. This is mm -hmm. a tiny little baby steamer because um, just doing a very small batch right now. Right. But I'm lining the steamer with leaves. Okay. And I actually have another batch of leaves. I can use these that I started with, but I always keep a batch of leaves that are um, kind of too small. Oh, um, okay. Even ones that are like this size, mm -hmm. they're really hard to work with. So I just save them and then I use them to line the steamer mm -hmm. um, just to give it an extra layer of insulation. Okay. And um, someone's asking, are the leaves moist when wrapping? The leaves are not... They're not very moist at all. Okay. Um, I mean, they're moist because they're like living. I mean, they're like, they're plants. Right, it's an know? organic right plant. Yeah, but gotcha. they're not wet at all. Okay. Um, so here's my, okay. So I'm going to start with a little ball of masa. I usually actually weigh just because I like to be precise and make sure that everyone ordering tamales from me gets the same size tamal. Mm -hmm. um, but I usually weigh three ounces of masa and three ounces of filling. Okay. So it's even. Sometimes it's disappointing when you get a tamal and it's all masa and like yeah. one little piece of filling. Um, so I like to do a half and half ratio. Oh, okay. And this little, this was 3.7, so that's cool for me. Are you using a digital scale? 
yeah, I'm using a digital scale. It's kind of hidden, but it is right. It is there. Um, and I'm just kind of. I like to make. I like to make a, a rectangular shape. Different people have a have different, um, you know, methods of doing this. I like to make a rectangle, and um, I put my chicken kind of like to the right, mm -hmm. and then I lift from the bottom, and I like. I, my goal is to get the two, the two sides of the edges of the masa rectangle to touch each other. Mm -hmm. So then I could like seal it from the outside. Oh, uh, okay. And then that makes it like kind of it closes lets, it. It closes it. Yeah. Yeah. You're tucking it in, making it like a little sleeping bag. And then, <laughs> like, good night, little mama. I'll see you in my stomach. <laughs> yeah, see you there. <laughs> Enjoy the um, steamer. So then here comes troubleshooting. So sometimes, like, even if you've cured them, there's still little cracks that happen and look oh, like right. some masa is, like, slipping out of there. So that is something to fix because that can like sometimes the steam uh, like all the humidity in the pot like gets in through that place and it mm -hmm. like it just gets the man is kind of like watery tasting oh um, okay if if there's too many of those uh oh, little much moisture spaces. gets into it yeah like gotcha. you want it to be pretty enclosed so this had trouble this leaf had trouble uh -huh. like thing so what i'm gonna do is give it another wrap in a, another leaf so it's just going to have double protection mm. um and there are some leaves that are there some uh, people that make tamales with like a parchment it's not parchment paper but it's like its own kind of like special wrapper that it's like a paper that you put around it mm -hmm. i don't usually <clears throat> use those i just like to use two layers of leaf if oh, I have gotcha. to, mm -hmm. but basically I just took that and I, it's like wrapping a present. So okay. I just want to give it coverage. Practice many years at Skylight. And back right. to like all my holiday <laughs> gift wrapping <laughs> at Skylight Books. Um, so so uh -huh. that's pretty much it. Oh. And then you do this over and over again until you run out of masa, you run out of chicken or you run out of leaves, but hopefully you've like, Right, and kind of proportioned everything. Proportioned, yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know: Do you have any steaming pot sizes uh, that you recommend for making tamales? Yes, I do. Um, I will show you. So, um, just so we don't go too over the time. Uh -huh. I just want to emphasize that um, I it's a good idea to steam these standing up. Okay. So arrange them. This is not a good example of the pot because it's shallow. Oh, smaller, but yeah. Okay. Arrange them so that they're standing up as opposed to laying down because what happens if you do it laying down is that they end up getting smashed. The ones at the uh. bottom, like just like get so smashed and flattened that sometimes the filling will just like come out of the whole leaf. Oh. So we don't want to put too much pressure on them. So just make like an outer ring and then fill in with the inner ring and oh, just okay. give them space because they will expand um, as they cook. And um, then oh. when you're done, mm -hmm. put another layer of leaves to kind of like further insulate it. Sometimes what I do is I put <clears throat> the whole ring like outer ring inner ring and then however many i can fit in yeah. comfortably and then i put one single thumb on laying down on top of all oh. the other ones and that is my tester that's like when the one and a half hours to two hours are up uh -huh. then i open the pot and i check that one at the top and if the steam has cooked the, all the, the one all the way at the top that I know all the ones, oh, all the the ones way at the bottom are going to be right. good. Yeah. Okay. We have one so, final question. Uh, yeah. And then she just wants to know, just to make sure, are the 
tamales not tied? They're just folded in this particular case, or do you tie them? I don't tie them. Um, it's common to tie them in, I know that in Central America and Costa Rica, they would make what they call piñas, which is a series of three tied up. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe other people tie them too. My family didn't really tie. They're uh -huh. just um, folded and, and wrapped up in little bundles. Um, but they they are they have a lot of coverage. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to bring you the pot that So I love this size. Mm. Um which is, let me if I have a measuring tape here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a 12, 12 diameter uh -huh. and it's a oh. 10 inch pot. And this can fit about 38. Fantastic. 38. Um, so, that's that. I have a wider one that's it's a little bit wider than this. It's kind of the same, but I, I do love a good tamale pot. And I like the ones that are stainless steel because yeah. aluminum isn't always a good thing to have, like, you know, gotcha. rubbing off on your, on oh, your food. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Yeah. The next thing would just be to cover this up. Put it on the stove. This, of course, is filled with water at the bottom, right. so it steams. Oh, okay. And then, um, and then take off the top in about a nap between an hour and a half. You could check it an hour and a half, and then you can, if it's for some reason not ready, you can give it another twenty-five to thirty minutes. Okay. That's it. Yay! Thank you Yay. so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Any any closing thoughts before we? Uh... We finish out for today. No, it's okay. We got just had a good time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people ask so many good questions yeah. during the session. Oh, somebody wanted to know if you had a steaming insert. Is that a? Oh, I do for for that big pot. Yeah, I guess so. I, I do. It is. Um, I do have one. I don't know where it is in this moment, but I do have one. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. The answer you can just say yes. yes. <laughs> the answer is yes, I do. And it's all the way up there, but it, it's right. a round wire. Okay. That, uh, yeah. That and then if anybody out. wants to follow Perla, you do, do you announce your pop-ups on your Instagram? Because somebody says I they're do. from the Bay Area. So, oh, yay. Um, um, yes, I do. I actually haven't announced this one is coming up, um, but it's next weekend at Morning Tide Cafe, Morning Tide Cafe, Morning Tide Shop in Albany on Cornell, off of Solano. And um, it's a tamale pop-up. So I'll be selling these tamales. Um, yeah, and I'll be there from 10 to 4 p.m. Um, on Saturday. All right. so, if anybody, yeah, yeah, thank you. And if anybody else has any other questions or wants to follow Pearl on Instagram, um, there's her Instagram right there. She's very friendly. Yay, I am friendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Pearl. This was so fun. Was I'm glad so we get to fun. hang out. Yeah. Me too. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right. You have to make something else, but uh, okay, maybe we can do it together. Yeah. We'll I'll do something. Do All right. <laughs> Bye, Perla. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope everybody had a good time. And thank you so much for joining us for today's LA May program. And remember to check out the library's online calendar at lapl.org slash events for all of our other amazing LA May programs. And don't forget to check out our next LA May program on Thursday, December 16th at 4 p.m. with graphic artist Jaime Hernandez, one part of the famous Los, Her famous Los Hernandez brothers, who will be in conversation with Javier Cabral, editor-in-chief of the LA Taco blog. Uh, they'll be talking about Jaime's new book, Queen of the Ring, and participants who attend the program will have a chance to win a free copy 
of Jaime Hernandez's new book, Queen of the Ring. Uh, finally, our winter reading challenge is right around the corner. Join the winter reading challenge and let a book charm, intrigue, or transport you. Complete five activities and be entered into a drawing to win a prize from the library store. This reading challenge will be start on December 6th, which is already come, and go on to January 8th, 2022. Please visit lapl.org slash, uh, I'm doing it wrong, slash winter for more information. Until next time, we truly appreciate all your support. The success of LA Made and all of our library programs could not happen without viewers like you. So thank you.